producers. Welcome to this tutorial. It's called meeting the nodes. This will be the first one. The idea is that you can understand about the different nodes in Godot and learn how to use them more efficiently. The first one will be just the node. Remember to click here in the scene tab. You can see all the nodes that you can instance in your, in your scene. The root one and the base one is the node we just created. Uh, in Godot, different to other uh, game engines, a node is just a node. It doesn't have anything special, no transform information like rotation and translation. It's just a node because, as you see, it can have children and it, could ha it can have parents, and that's about it. So, well, um, let's see what it can be done with a node. Uh, here you can see the properties of this node. Uh, there's nothing much, just a pause mod and the script. Uh, I think one of the things you, you want to know is how to script it. So this is the first thing we will do. If you look here at the top of the scene tab, you can see a few icons. You can create a, a script here, but it's kind of a lot of steps. So you have this button here, which is faster. It, it brings up a wizard for creating a script. Before creating it, it's recommended that you save the scene, like for example, this. And then when you create the, the script, if it's in root node, it's going to be named just like your scene, test.gd. It inherits the node class and then it's a test. Then we create it. As you can see, this is the script. Um, Let's explain a bit what you can do with a script. The first thing is this ready function that comes preset. This is, it's important to tell that this is not really a, a constructor that you will uh, see in other uh, languages. The constructor in this scripting language is in it. It's, it's this. This is what's called when the node is created. But you generally don't want this because what you want is when the node is created, you want to access uh, all the sub nodes on your entire scene. So the ready function is called when the node and all the sub nodes enter into the active scene tree. Uh, in the scene tree, you can see all the nodes that are working. When you remove them, they stop being active. Every time the node the node enters the scene, the the function ready will be called. So what else can we do in a node? Remember that in Godot you have the, the full built-in documentation. You can search for the class node and you can see uh, all the documentation, all the functions. You see the virtual functions here that work for, for just overriding stuff. Uh, I think the main things you can override here are the process function, which is the most common one, I think. The first most common one. You can override process. And you can see the automation is going to complete this. This is called uh, every frame and Delta is tell, is telling you the time that uh, happened and that passed since the previous frame. Uh, this function is not going to be called by default. If we, if we want to, to know about process and, and get it, get, got it called every frame, you have to set it uh, active like this. And now you will get uh, this function called every frame. The other important function is input. And you will get this function called every time there is an event uh, from keyboard, mouse, joysticks, everything. Um, again, so these functions work. You, you have to enable this with this. Here you can enable processing of input and you will get input events. You can check the event type, for example, It will autocomplete, as you see. This we get called when the user press the, the left mouse button. You will get this call. So these are the two main things you can you can use in in a node. Yeah, it, it works for every node since there is inheritance. And this is something else we can do. For example, we will create another node. Uh, this is another node, and we will create another script for this node with this again. Uh, as you see, this is not the root uh, node, so it will ask you for another uh, script path. For, for example, we can do this. There we go, we have another script. Each node has a script. 
Okay, let's see. You want to access, uh, they both have a script. You want to access uh, this node. We're going to give it some name like uh, Charlie, just because. And then we will have uh, a function. Uh, and we can have a variable if you wish. Uh, so imagine you are here in this script, in this node, which is the, the, the base node, and you want to access the function from, from these other nodes. It's very easy, you just use the get node function, just call get node. You will see auto completion for everything. So you get the node Charlie, and then you can call uh, the hello function, as you can see. It's very easy, just call it as if it was like a regular code if you want to change the variable, like increment the, the hellos. Just like this. As you can see, it's very easy to communicate uh, between scripts in different nodes in Godot. So, one last thing. Let's just explain what the pause is. We have seen it before, but I hadn't explained it. As you can see, uh, every node has a pause mod which is inherit stop and process, by default it's inherit. This means that the behavior will be the same as the parent node. So, if you want to pause the game and you want uh, to, to just pause it, what's going to happen is that the process and input functions will not get called anymore. You mean that, you, I mean that the node is go not going to work any longer when, when paused, it will not get either input or processing. Uh, but if you want this node to work while the game is paused, you just change this to to um, process, so in pause mode it's going to process. This is basically what happens when the game is paused. So uh, just change it to this, uh, and the, the, this this will be called again. This is useful because you can pause the entire game but leave a few menus that still work when the game is paused. Well, and the last function that you will see today is the notification. This is a little lower level, but it's interesting to know that it exists. This you can override to. And so what is notification? Uh, let's check uh, on the search help, the classes, node. As you can see, there is this list of contents, constants in every node, which is like enter tree, exit tree, move the power ready, fix it, process, process. Every every kind of event uh, gets a notification in your node. Uh, this is events for your same node, things that are happening to this node, okay? Uh, as you see, node inherits object, and object has a few notifications of itself, like uh, post initialized after it was created. This got called before it's going to be deleted. It's like uh, the structure, but not really. Uh, and these are the two notifications. When you work with nodes, just make sure to check the notifications. Maybe there's something you care about it. But in most cases, you will find a virtual function that that does what you want without having to use the notification system. It's just good to know that it's there. Well, this has been everything for today. Thank you for listening and goodbye.